From FingerLakes1.com, I'm Josh Durso, and this is Inside the FLX. Our program today starts in 2004 when a group of five college students, led by Mark Zuckerberg, founded a platform called Facebook. It sounded strange at the time, but the rise of social was officially underway. As of late 2017, there were over 3 billion active social media users on the planet, with the average internet user having more than seven social media accounts each. To put that growth in perspective, in quarters two and three of 2017, social media platforms gained a total of 121 million new accounts. Our guests today are here to talk about an event coming up in Seneca Falls called Social Media Awareness Parent Education Night, which is happening next Monday, March 26th at 6.30 p.m. at the Minders Academy Auditorium. Whew, that's a mouthful, and thank, I want to thank my guests for being here. Uh, to start out, let's go around uh, the room, starting with you. Uh, Bob, let's start with you. A uh, little bit about yourself, background, how you got involved with school. So, good morning, Josh. My name is Bob McKevney. I'm the superintendent in the Seneca Falls Central School District. I've been superintendent for 10 years, principal for 16 years prior to that, and um, looking forward to bringing a program to students and parents uh, regarding social media awareness. And we will jump over to our, our we'll call it the student section. We have a, a PTO rep and a student. Uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with you. My name is Kara Lajewski, and I am currently a member of the Board of Education, and I've been involved with our PTOs at the schools since we started here, since my kids started school. And Morgan? Hi, I'm Morgan Ellis. I'm 17, and I'm a junior at Minders Academy who placed second at the Rotary's Oratorical Contest with my essay on digital footprinting. Digital footprinting. You want to talk about a change? A, a student taking on that kind of that kind of topic. That's heavy stuff. Uh, Bob, let, I just want to jump to you real quick. How does that make you feel when you when you see your students taking on really deep topics like that? So the power to Morgan um, give her speech um, is a powerful message. On top of the fact that she did so well and placed second uh, regionally is quite an accomplishment. And so we look forward to next week using using Morgan to open up the assemblies mm -hmm. for the three buildings, Minders Academy, Seneca Falls Middle School, and Katie Stanton Elementary School. And then also in the evening for the Parent Education Night, I think Morgan brings a big message and would be a great lead in to our presenter next Monday night. Okay, so let's let's jump into the, the nitty gritty of what this event is. Uh, give us a little bit of overview, what will be happening uh, at the student level and then also for parents, obviously, that evening. So given the stats that you referenced at the start of the show, uh, social media is probably bigger than all of us. And so uh, the days are gone where everybody's effort is to try to shut it down, mm -hmm. but maybe to teach the broader message of how can we re be responsible and how can we teach students to be responsible uh, regarding use of social media. Um, used for all the right reasons, it can be a powerful tool uh, in today's society. We also want to create that greater awareness with parents, and so hence the program next Monday night. So I just want to jump over uh Morgan, the the student reception to this kind of this kind of topic, what what is it like? What are other students sort of talking about when they hear about this? When all my friends heard about it, I know they were thinking like, well, when I post that, I only think like thirty of my friends are going to see it, but they don't understand like the impact is worldwide. Like anyone could search up your name or a keyword in your tweet and see it. Like whether it's a tweet or an Instagram post, like it's going to affect everybody. Is that, and I want to jump to the, the two parents in the room, uh, is that more difficult for parents to get their, their heads wrapped around or more difficult for students? Because it seems from the outside uh, that students are a little more adept to realizing what's happening in the scope of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to get your two perspectives on what that is like. I think, I think, I think parents have a handle on the exposure that kids have with their digital footprint. Mm -hmm. I think students tend to lack that awareness of the permanency that right. anything that's posted is there. It stays, even if you delete it, it's still there somewhere where somebody's taken a screenshot of it and you can't pull it back. So now obviously you're looking forward to the next, uh, the next step of this. What kind of preparations are you guys going through? Uh, who actually is going to be involved with this presentation on that end of it? So we have contracted with Dynamic Influence, and the presenter is Rob Hackinson. 
And so he has a national following. And so if you go to dynamicinfluence.com, you can track uh, the places he's been and the programs that he has provided to schools and parents across the country, along with testimonials from many of them and many uh, media sources uh, that kind of back that work. So our effort is to promote that awareness, but also look to keep that momentum going because there's a responsibility for schools right now to teach what's appropriate. And what's appropriate is responsibility on social media. And that's a type of topic that can be embedded across the curriculum through teachable moments. And so we look forward to uh, making this the start of a conversation that can happen in classrooms, but that can also happen with student councils and PTOs so that we can send the broader message of it's appropriate to use it, but what's the appropriate way to use it? Is this also a way to, to sort of get that conversation going at home as well? That was the purpose for the parent one, because as you said, this is probably bigger than most parents realize. And so early on, we want to teach that awareness. But as you get to high school and uh, Morgan's age, kids are starting to understand the permanency. Prior mm -hmm. to that, Katie Stanton age, middle school age, you often would hear, hear I didn't mean it. But the mm -hmm. permanency does not eliminate it. So we might understand that, but they may not understand how that's going to impact them now and in the future. Uh, how well equipped do you think at this point, given how much has changed in the last, say, seven to ten years, uh, how well equipped do you think schools are specifically and able to uh, start teaching and also be out in front of this really tough issue? So, so we've taken a district initiative over the past few years to increase student engagement in classrooms. And so we feel that kids are going to learn better at a better rate and be able to retain skills and concepts at a greater rate if they are more engaged in the learning. So uh, long are the days where a teacher would get up and lecture for 35 of the 40 minutes. Now it's a mini lesson followed by student engagement. And that doesn't always have to include um, technology or social media, but it can. And so you will see uh, places in the school district where teachers are taking advantage of uh, using technology and or social media to be able to reinforce uh, what's going on in the classroom. Wouldn't be, uh, uncommon to see a teacher asking students to tweet out a response or something that they've learned and using a similar hashtag. And that's the world they're going to go into as quick as when they leave us. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see that shift. Um, it may be students working in small groups for a greater period of time, but also accessing technology or reaching out to someone else on social media. So that's the way they learn when they get away from us. That's the way we as adults learn. And that's the responsibility that we have moving forward in teaching our kids proper use. Was that change a long time coming? Um, I think it's an evolution. And yeah. so, as you say, seven to 10 years, uh, kids had phones seven to 10 years ago, but they didn't use them for the same purpose as they're used for today. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll quickly say, when an adult wants to learn something, what do we do? We pull out our phone. And right. so, quite frankly, we need to teach responsibility regarding how they use it. So... Uh, Carol, let's jump over to you. Uh, your your thoughts on this type of uh, program and what impact it could have uh, moving forward. Obviously, it sounds more like a first step in terms of what you guys want to accomplish uh, in the grand scheme of things. I think it's a great presentation for the school to be doing for the parents, especially. Um, you know, as parents, we try to get to know who our kids' friends are before they go to someone's house. We know mm -hmm. what's going on at that house. We know who their coaches are. We know who their extracurricular leaders are. But when they get on social media, we don't know who they're interacting with. And we don't know not just what they're posting, because we don't know that, um, but we don't know what they're being exposed to either. And I think that's a big part of that mystery of social media is that our kids end up being exposed to things that we would never allow in mm -hmm. person, in a room, in a classroom, um, and we have no control over that. So I think a big part of it is not just teaching our kids how to post appropriately and share appropriately, but also teaching our parents that apps have a lot of uses past what their description is on that app download page. Mm -hmm. And... Um, trying to get parents more familiar and also engaging parents in their kids' lives in that way. How do you balance the, the on one hand, you have the worry, the concern that kid, the kids might find something or get into something that might be beyond them. 
uh, with the usefulness that technology obviously provides in social media and all that obviously uh, helps with. How do you balance and sort of reconcile that? So I think that you also have to have a clear explanation of what some of the unintended consequences are. Mm -hmm. So quite frankly, what's the root cause of something that happened amongst kids? It could go back to social media posting. And quite frankly, uh, the bullying went to cyberbullying. And so quite, quite frankly, to be able to teach some of those lessons regarding that, and the, as Kara said, the wider footprint of the number of people that have seen that and where that can go. Um, so that's also a piece as well. So you have to balance out that negative reinforcement with uh, responsibility. The the I just want to sort of touch on that a little more, if you could, uh, the, the cyberbullying side of it, because it seems of all the negatives that have come from social media and the Internet, um, technology as a whole, that seems to be the big negative. Um, are schools now in a better place with handling it and dealing with it than they were five, ten years ago? So the law has changed. So right now it is the responsibility of the school district to investigate any social media um, uh, concerns that are brought to our attention that impact the school day. So that's a uh, threshold that we kind of balance all the time. Um, but that is something that if a, if a student feels uncomfortable, feels that their day would be impacted, they're not able to learn, um, then it is the school's responsibility to do that. But it's a balance scale that uh, creates a partnership with parents and the community. So that is something the school has taken on uh, per the law over the past, I want to say, five to six years mm -hmm. um, and is able to look into that pretty clearly. Um, the other piece that I'll say during the course of the school day, um, we do have a uh, screening software that we use in the district that at the end of the parent program next week, Mr. Bruni will elaborate a little bit um, regarding the GoGuardian software that we have that's able to scan um, for certain words and certain phrases that may be put out using the district's network or even the district's guest network. And so we're able to look at that now. That's been in place uh, for a little while. I think a lot of people don't know about that, but it's also stuff that we look at every day. If we get an alert, it goes either to the principal or the school resource officer, and then we're able to look into that clearly. And that kind of leads to that whole thing, I didn't mean it, mm -hmm. except I didn't mean it becomes permanent. And right. so that's the piece about um, we need to balance out that negative reinforcement cycle with uh, this pro probably plenty of ways to use it in a good way. So you take some of the things that have happened in the country lately, um, you look at the hashtag never again, but part of the movement away from that is how can we do really good things? So send out, send out tweets to kids to make them feel, feel really good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to do that. And so you have a student movement that's trying to push that across the country. That may be what takes hold because students learn best from students. And so we're looking forward to moving that in a positive direction. Now, Morgan, I just want to jump back to you real quick. Um, as it pertains to students, the younger generations, teaching their parents, their grandparents, how to use your laughing because you've, you've experienced it, I've experienced it, we've all experienced it. Um, how does that play into this sort of educational, it's, it seems like young people teaching older folks and older folks sort of uh, instilling a little bit of wisdom, but it seems like a, a very fluid back and forth process. Yeah, definitely. It's, I think, another way to like bridge the gap between the generations and stuff. Like we can all learn from each other. Like I know oftentimes my mom will be like, hey, how do you do this? And I always know the answer. But at the same time, my mom's the one who's taught me everything. Right. So it just bridges the gap between us even more. How in, when you hear that is, that, is that the secret, the back and forth? Is that the, the key? Well, a couple of things. One, it says Morgan's an absolute superstar. So <laughs> the fact of the matter is she sends a strong message that parents right. can learn from, that it's a two-way street. So obviously we're going to learn a lot more from kids her age about social media than we are trying to catch up to it. And so mm -hmm. to engage kids is really powerful. And so if we open up that line of communication, I think that can be really helpful. And Kara, how, just in your, your thoughts, your opinion, uh, how important are the student leaders on this issue? I think that's absolutely important. Everybody, well, everybody knows that um, kids have accounts on social media that they don't show to their parents. And so having students like Morgan who say that we need to be communicating with each other 
and for parents to have open communication with their kids, not just about social media, but about the day-to-day -day things throughout their lives. And then once they hit social media, it's nothing new that they're dealing with by talking with their parents. It's just a new format that they're sharing with their parents. Mm -hmm. Now there is a, and I wanna go around the, around the room to answer this one because I, I got a question from a, a listener that I, I really wanted to share with you guys. Uh, this person said, should we be concerned about overexposure when it comes to social media and technology as a whole? Uh, this person continued to say, uh, some see schools as the last sanctuary free of technology. Uh, and at the same time, districts seem to be putting more and more emphasis on it. Uh, Bob, let's start with you. And when you hear something like that, uh, what's your gut reaction to it and what are your thoughts? I think it's unavoidable. So the fact of the matter is if we keep trying to say put it away, um, I think they're going to take it out in spite of us, not because of us. So the fact of the matter is there's plenty of times when you don't use your phone, but we're also finding ways where teachers are starting to find ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, as Morgan said, bridging the gap. So when these kids leave us and they go to college, they're probably going to use their phone to see what professors are posting online regarding assignments and, and lectures and so on and so forth. And that's where you're going to see things such as a flipped classroom, where they're going to listen to the lecture before they come to class. So we're not completely embedding it. We're looking to increase student engagement and student empowerment that creates the balance. And so that's where I would hope that would go. But parents and community need to understand we're trying to find the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And Kara, your, your reaction to that sort of thought process? I think it's great that the school is um, trying to harness the power of social media and utilize it in education. Um, on the flip side of that, on the social side of that, I do worry that you know kids have their heads down and they're looking at their phones and they might be interacting with the kid across the table from them, but not with anyone else at the table. They're, they're not making eye contact. They're not speaking to each other. They're talking in shorthand. They're talking with pictures. Um, so I do worry about some of those other social skills uh, mm -hmm. and experiences that the kids are missing out on. At the younger ages, at our roller skating party the other day at Katie Stanton, I had to ask several students to put their phones away. <laughs> and I thought, you're here to roller skate. Just be fun and have have fun and be kids and right. uh, so I, I I do think it's a balance but I think that doing programs like this at the school is important and using it for positive is important to show the benefits of what this tool can be and Morgan I'm really curious as as the student as the sole student in this room uh, when you hear something like that, do you get concerned? Are you worried? To me, it seems like kids are much less worried than adults are yeah. about it because it seems like the younger generation has done a better job of putting it all in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think definitely speaking off of Mr. McKevney, the whole thing with like bridging, bringing it into the school and stuff. Like I know our school has a big hashtag SFCSD proud, mm -hmm. and like every day there's tweets from different teachers or like they're encouraging students. Like I know. Like a lot of teachers from the district posted about me and Lewis, mm -hmm. and so I think that that's a definite positive way to use it, and so I think that's a good positive to it. But on the flip side, like we talked about, there is also negatives with like overexposure, and kids are growing up a lot faster than they used to. Like some of the twelve-year-olds know more than I knew when I was twelve. <laughs> so you have to think about that, and is like, is it good they're learning quicker and growing up, or should they try to stay kids as long as possible? How does that affect the education side of it? Because I'm just thinking in terms of broad broad strokes, that has to that has to flip education on its head, right? Yeah, so I, I think about that, and if we had a teacher here, they would say, how do we strike that balance to build in some of those social skills? Or if we had an employer in the community say, we want to go back to focusing in on soft skills, um, so those are the things that we don't want to lose, mm -hmm. that some people will say we may have lost with this generation, that we need to balance out with what's going on. And so I think that's the piece. So the thing is, a teacher may say off and away, because it's not a class we're using that. And so we need to make students understand there'll be places where you can and places where it's, it, it's not appropriate. So we may use the off and away, but uh, you see a big movement, as Morgan said, with teachers to post positive things about the school district, and it's just, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a requirement by anybody. Um, but interestingly enough, with all the adults that do in the district, probably about 50 teachers, um, 
how many kids respond that they liked it. And we had a student speak up more recently at a district steering committee about how proud she was when her teachers and her administrators are posting good things about what kids are doing in the school district to promote the positive. So maybe it's a little bit of modeling, but we have an awful lot to learn from people like Morgan and her classmates. Does the, does the push towards technology impact the way uh, kids are able to prep or get ready for big tests and things like that? Yes, because quite frankly, uh, there will be teachers that will post things on Google, whether they use Google Classroom or whether they use shared documents. So there are students that can collaborate from home on a shared doc, or they can collaborate on a classroom by looking at what a teacher has posted, whether it be for a test or whether it be for a project or an assignment. So that's commonplace, and we've had students demonstrate that to the Board of Education at the middle school level, but that goes on all across the district. And there are teachers that have picked right up on that because we have more access to Chromebooks and devices for kids. And that, quite frankly, is what they're going to walk into when they leave us. Now, uh, before we get you guys out of here, obviously, busy day, busy week for all of you. Um, What is the event and when can people attend it who live in Seneca Falls? So Monday, March 26th, Dynamic Influence presenter Rob Hackinson uh, will be in district all day. There will be a middle school presentation at 810, high school at 930, Katie Stanton at 115, and the Parent Education Night at 630 p.m. Our Seneca Falls Education Association, uh, the teachers are providing dinner for parents that uh, wish to come at 545, and there will be child care available in the high school gym and in the library so that uh, parents don't have to worry about that part of it if it holds them back. Um, I also want to send a shout out to the Bonifiglia family. They are covering the costs for the entire presentation. Uh, with the message that they feel uh, this is a really important topic. So if we can uh, start that conversation and keep the momentum going, um, we feel great about that, and we thank them very dearly for their contribution. Well, I really appreciate you guys uh, coming in to talk about this. Obviously, getting the vast uh, scope of perspectives is really important on uh, on this topic. So thanks a lot to all three of you for coming in. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for us today. I'd like to thank our guests, our listeners, and, of course, FingerLikes1.com for making this podcast possible. Inside the FLX airs Sundays at 7 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 1304 and is available on iTunes, Stitcher, and the FingerLikes1.com app. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time.